Welcome to The Christian Atheist, where faith and reason fuse in the Incarnation. Episode number 89, Paradise Lost, Book 1, Evil Unrepentant. Arguably, the central character, the protagonist of Milton's Paradise Lost, is Satan. He is also, of course, the ultimate antagonist of the Western tradition, evil incarnate, the enemy of good. Milton's portrait of Lucifer is deeply ambivalent, and I think purposely so. The reader of Paradise Lost cannot but find sympathy, even at times admiration for the arch-fiend. This ambivalence is very modern in flavor, though it is not new. It has always, from before the dawn of time, we might say, been with us. We might also say that, defying historical precedent, it is the distinctive character of our contemporary society today, as exemplified in Disney's Descendants, Broadway's Wicked, and our attachment to the anti-hero. We are, today, reflexively drawn to identify with the opposition, the antithesis, the victim. We no longer side with the good. Rather, we practice a hermeneutic of suspicion toward goodness, substituting the negative virtue of exposing and opposing oppression to any positive notion of goodness. In practice, we empty morality of positive content, for ethical value lies in the consequences of our actions, never in the actions themselves. We have, that is, deeply imbibed a moral relativism, an ethics of the ends justify the means, a profound skepticism toward value itself. This attitude is founded in the denial of objective value, or alternatively, an embrace of value's subjectivity, as we saw a few weeks ago in C.S. Lewis's essay, The Poison of Subjectivism. There is, on this view, no good in itself, only a good for me, for a subject. And the only way to decide between these subjective goods, when there is disagreement, is power. These ideas pervade Paradise Lost in the character of Satan, who, aspiring to set himself in glory above his peers, trusted to have equaled the Most High. The ambivalence results from hidden contradiction and the simultaneous embrace of two fundamentally opposed value systems. This week, I would like to comment on a single passage from Book 1 of Milton's Paradise Lost. Satan, having lost the war in heaven and banished to hell, says, Is this the region? said then the lost archangel. This the seat that we must change for heaven? This mournful gloom for that celestial light? Be it so, since he who now is sovereign can dispose and bid what shall be right. Whom reason hath equaled, force hath made supreme above his equals. Farewell, happy fields where joy forever dwells. Hail, horrors! Hail, infernal world, and thou profoundest hell, receive thy new possessor, one who brings a mind not to be changed by place or time. The mind is its own place, and in itself can make a heaven of hell, a hell of heaven. What matter where? if I be still the same, and what I should be all but less than he whom thunder hath made greater? Here at least we shall be free. Here we may reign secure, and in my choice to reign is worth ambition though in hell. Better to reign in hell than serve in heaven. Throughout Paradise Lost, Satan is a figure of profound ambiguity, and he evokes equally profound ambivalence in us. Regretting heaven's loss, he embraces hell's gain. 
Evil is rational, even hyper-rational. This is a central theme for Milton. It is also fundamentally self-deceptive, as only rational creatures can be. Its central characteristic is denial of the real, as we will see clearly here in the character of the lost archangel. This stunning passage presents a wealth of insight into not only the nature of evil, but of our contemporary world's pathological reasoning processes. Satan proclaims acceptance of his change of place. Be it so! And thus blunts, in his mind, the involuntary necessity of his punishment with choice. By freely embracing this necessity, he makes it his own, his self-willed possession. There is something noble in this. However, in the same breath, he denies his self-will, his responsibility for rebellion. Quote, he who now is sovereign can dispose and bid what shall be right. It is not his fault he has been cast into hell, but God's, whose arbitrary will decreed the fault in his action, and whose unjust power to enforce that arbitrary will overmastered him. He has done nothing wrong, for morality is not real, not objective, but only the decree of power, of which he is the victim. There is both a rational inversion and a contradiction here, but it is slippery, not easy to nail down, for it is reason itself that is inverted, and reality along with it. Whom reason hath equaled, force hath made supreme above his equals. Satan acknowledges God's greater force, but denies his right to it by claiming victim status. It is God who is the moral reprobate, he who unfairly gained his position by subjugating his equals. This charge against God, however, relies upon the very objective morality Satan has just denied as real. The subtle oscillation between strategically asserting an objective morality and then denying it is evident here. This strategy is in constant use today. Satan's claim to equality with God bears the same rationally self-deceptive and contradictory inversion of reality and imagination. Whom reason hath equaled, he claims, knowing full well that it is not only in power that God exceeds him. Claims of equality, or equity, as we prefer in today's language, are especially slippery, taking advantage of the ambiguity inherent in the term. Moral equality, the way in which all rational beings are equal, means that every rational being ought to do what is right and good. We are equal before the law. The moral law applies equally to all rational beings, including God. It is precisely this rational ought that Satan denies, however, by asserting arbitrary power as the basis for morality. The only true sense in which Satan is rationally God's equal, as he here claims, is the one sense he denies but he relies on the ambiguity in equality to work in his favor. God is not being fair and inclusive. Equality with God on any other footing is illusory and exists only in the mind of the rational imagination. It can be maintained only by denying reality itself. But Satan, like today's moral reformers, only denies reality and objective ethics when it is convenient. God holds the highest position, which Satan desires, and herein lies the rub. Satan's desire clings to an objective and real value system, while his reason to justify his actions demands a relativistic and subjective one. His actions are predicated on God's position as objectively more valuable than his own. 
He wants God's position because it is more valuable. In this way, he embraces both reality and objective value. To justify his revolt, however, he denies objective value and whatever realities he finds inconvenient to his ends. The explanation for this elaborate self-deception, this constant oscillation between subjective and objective dispositions, is found here. Farewell, happy fields, where joy forever dwells. Hail horrors, hail infernal world, and thou profoundest hell receive thy new possessor, one who brings a mind not to be changed by place or time. The mind is its own place, and in itself can make a heaven of hell, a hell of heaven. We limited rational beings are, by our very constitution, in constant pursuit of value. It is our adventure. As such, we are to give ourselves over to the ongoing perfection of our minds, the transformation Paul speaks of in Romans 12. It is to the real, the true, and the beautiful that we are to be conformed. The refusal of change to our minds by place or time is here properly claimed by Satan himself. It is the holding on to the self that excludes that transformation. It is the rejection of objective reality in favor of subjectivity. The words are important. The mind is its own place. It is a substitute for reality. It is where we are gods. It is also where God will not go. He will not compel our will. It is also where we can live in deception, as the architects of our own prison. Satan can indeed make a hell of heaven. But the realities of hell will remain the fiery torments of his imagined heaven. What matter where, if I be still the same? Indeed, Satan's hell began long before his expulsion from heaven. It was his own self-will that separated him from God and began the hell in his mind, his own place. His self-deception His rationalization keeps him from understanding that in holding on to his own place, he has given up all real value. Here at least we shall be free. Here we may reign secure, and in my choice to reign is worth ambition, though in hell. Better to reign in hell than serve in heaven. So long as we seek to make our reality, rather than be subject to reality, to God, we too will continue to forge our own chains. I am a Christian with the searching and skeptical mind of an atheist. I don't want to believe anything that isn't true. I know both sides of the looking glass and I know them with open eyes. I choose Christ's side. I invite you to join me from wherever you stand before the looking glass. That's this week's episode. Thanks for listening. And remember, you can have your religious cake and eat it too. You can have reason, respect for science, a 21st century worldview, and be a Christian.